Welcome to Dateline Polk with news about your county government. I'm your host, Maria Tripp. Today, you'll learn about county commission actions from the May 15th board meeting. Industry in Polk County is growing, and that means new jobs for our residents. On Tuesday, the board approved $128,000 over a three-year period in business incentive funds for a supply chain management and third-party logistics company. This company, which could be locating to Lakeland, will be leasing a 520,000 square foot speculative development space, creating 160 full-time jobs that pay an average of about $45,000 a year. The company still has not finalized its plans to move, and a measure like this is meant to attract the company to our area. A nearly $2.4 million contract with GLF Construction Incorporated to replace the Eagle Lake Loop Bridge was approved Tuesday. This morning, uh, we brought forth a contract with a contractor, GLF Construction, to replace the Eagle Lake Loop Bridge over in the Juanita area. This is a currently substandard bridge, doesn't meet current requirements, so we're upgrading it to meet current requirements. Therefore, it'll be a much safer and easier for people to drive across and hopefully be an improvement uh, for the flow of traffic through the area. A $1.3 million contract with General Underground LLC was approved for the Central Regional Utility Service Area Distribution System Improvements. The project aims to provide a redundant loop, increase water supply, and facilitate regionalization of potable water production. The board approved a one-time transfer of $2.1 million to fund standby power system improvements for Polk County Utilities. This will help pay for six mobile standby power generators, four mobile standby pumping systems, and eight sites with permanent standby power generators. These systems will help keep the power going at lift stations and treatment facilities in case of widespread power outages like those experienced during Hurricane Irma last year. A $4.2 million contract with Sin State Contractors Incorporated was approved Tuesday for the Dinner Lake South Storage and Booster State project. The project will convert the Dinner Lake South water production facility to a storage and a booster station. This will provide system reliability to meet existing and future demands. The board approved Amendment 1 with Clemens Rutherford and Associates for Phase 2 of the new Polk County Sheriff's Office Processing Center. This amendment, which will not cost more than $594,730, will include final design, permitting, bidding, and construction administration. I'm here this morning because of item number 18 on the board agenda which is to seek approval for the architecture and engineering services for the Sheriff's Office new processing center, which will replace the existing bookend facilities. The first amendment to the contract with Central Florida Healthcare Incorporated will increase funding by $420,225 for the purchase of dental equipment for qualified low-income county residents. The addition of a code enforcement investigator position was approved by the board to help with the workload following the adoption of the excess bulk waste ordinance. In other news, the board recognized several longtime employees for their dedicated service to the county. These employees included Kenneth R. Kenny Mosley, a traffic control technician for the Roads and Drainage Division, was recognized for 30 years of service. Vernon A. Robinson, a service worker and equipment operator in the Roads and Drainage Division, was recognized for 30 years of service. Frida E. Smith, a fiscal specialist in the Facilities Management Division, was recognized for 30 years of service. The board gave its approval Tuesday for County Attorney Michael Craig to file a petition for an administrative hearing or intervene in pre-existing filings, challenging the issuance of a modification to a water use permit held by the Peace River Minnesota County Water Supply Authority that increases the amount of water taken from the Peace River as well as extends the expiration date of the permit without requiring intermittent reviews. Thomas E. Pierce was approved as a member of the Board of Adjustment for a three-year term that ends April 7, 2021. The board had several ceremonial proclamations, presentations, and recognitions to present to community groups and events Tuesday morning. Tuesday's proclamations included 
the board adopted a resolution acknowledging participation in the Stepping Up Initiative Call to Action, sponsored by the National Association of Counties, the Council of State Governments Justice Center, and the American Psychiatric Association Foundation. We've been studying for the last year the needs for increased behavioral health to reduce recidivism in the jail. Our staff has been successful in securing two grants totaling $2.4 million and has put together a multidisciplinary group representing EMS, the Sheriff's Office, and local health professionals to implement a program that we think will dramatically improve the situation. Uh, it does represent a 50%, as almost a 60% increase in the amount of funds being spent by the Indigent Care Board for behavioral health in the coming year. The board also proclaimed May 20th through 26, 2018 as National Safe Boating Week. Gilbert Thomas, representing the U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary Flotilla 77, Polk County, Florida, accepted the proclamation. In public hearings, during the afternoon session, the board held several public hearings on a variety of items. Those items up for consideration included plans to create 160 new full-time jobs at a 520,000 square foot facility in Lakeland, along with a planned 8.45 million capital investment in equipment qualified DHL, a supply chain and logistics company, to qualify for a 75% five-year reduction in ad valorem taxes. The board approved the five-year deal Tuesday, provided the company meets all of its requirements. Construction delays experienced by two companies approved for tax exemptions were granted amended timelines for the originally approved tax exemptions. The timelines approved by the board will roll forward the timetables by one year. Aldi, a grocery store, will receive its approved exemption from 2019 through 2028. And Capital Management HOO Incorporated will have an exemption from 2019 through 2021. A registered felon fee ordinance was approved Tuesday, which provides for fees to be collected for the registration of sexual offenders, predators, career offenders, and convicted felons to offset the cost of providing the service. The board approved a contraction of the boundaries of the Fox Branch Ranch Community Development District from 907 to 508 acres. A land development code text amendment to Chapter 2, Section 220 Compatibility Standards was adopted by the board Tuesday to mitigate the adverse impacts of non-residential uses abutting residential properties. The board adopted ordinances that create the East Bimini Bay Utility Municipal Service Benefit Unit and the Island Club West MSBU. These two systems will be incorporated into the county's utility system. Each MSBU has an estimated annual revenue of $74,159 and $77,246, respectively. Well, that wraps up this edition of Dateline Polk. To keep current with programs and progress in the county, visit us online at polk-county.net or follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We encourage you to join us at the next scheduled board meeting at 9 a.m. Tuesday, June 5th. I'm Maria Tripp. Thanks for watching. <laughs>